look at that. Can you believe this is Sunday, November 5th? 51 degrees, not much of a wind. Partly cloudy. It is beautiful here in Landover, Maryland. And the series notes, that's about all you need to know. Dallas has won 15 of the last 18. However, <laughs> Washington won both meetings that these two had here last year, including a 35-7 drubbing over the Cowboys. Well, they just took apart Drew Bledsoe. Washington starts with a ball. And it takes a bounce outside the 10. Rock Cartwright on the return, and he's knocked down at the 20. Abram Elam there to make the stop and the 11-yard return. And here comes Mark Brunel, the embattled Mark Brunel, the left-hander. The stats aren't that bad, but, Troy, what people point to is that he's not a guy that's going to stretch the field and throw deep a lot, and he has not taken a lot of chances that Al Saunders quarterbacks usually take. Well, and also, Joe, a lot of those yards have come late in games when games have already been decided. You're right. He doesn't force the ball down the field, but I'll be honest with you, even if he wanted to, this offensive line hasn't given him great protection. Quick snap, and that offensive line blocked for Clinton Fortis, who picks up three. Here is the offensive line. Robach in the middle. He is flanked by Thomas and Dockery. And then those tackles, Jansen and Samuels. The backs and receivers. He set it at the top. We should see a lot of Clinton Portis today. Last two games, he has hardly done anything. Well, and a couple of things have to happen in order for him to be able to run the football. they got to have success doing it. And then the defense is going to have to be able to keep the score close. Second down and seven, and here's Portis, two plays, two runs, and this one goes nowhere. Picks up half a yard, and Marcus Spears on the stop for Dallas. Let's look at that 3-4 defense. Up front, Ferguson is the anchor in the middle. Former seventh-round pick when Parcells was with the New York Jets, now in his second year. And the linebackers are big, typical Bill Parcells linebackers, and it's Keith Davis starting at safety for the second straight week. Yeah, in fact, Patrick Watkins, who started the first games of the season, he did not even make the trip here to Washington for this game. Third and six. Brunel with time, fires and completes it. That's Cooley, and that's a first down and more as he's knocked out near the 45. 20-yard completion on third and six. And a good early big play from the Redskins. Well, and that's a start. Chris Cooley, the tight end there, number 47, runs a nice route, but a well-thrown ball by Mark Brunel. And without Santana Moss playing today, you get the idea that this is going to be Mark Brunel's number one target throughout the afternoon. He was the last time these two teams met here in this stadium last year in that 35-7 win. Cooley had three touchdowns. First down, a quick setup and throw, and a completion to Lloyd, about half a yard shy of a first down. So two for two is the start for Mark Brunel. And I know coming into the ball game, Joe, we talk about Clinton Portis and how much more he wants to be utilized as a runner within this offense. But yet, here today, they're going up against an awfully good defensive team against the run. The Dallas Cowboys are fourth in the National Football League. And so, unless something changes, Mark Brunel is going to have to have to have a very effective game throwing the football. There was movement by Cooley. That'll cost Washington five yards. False start. Offense. Number 47. Five-yard penalty. Second down. Terry McCauley in his new referee officials windbreaker. That's the winter wear there. That's the winter wear. Even though it's 51 degrees, but why not? If you're McCauley and you got some new duds, pull them out for a big Redskins-Cowboys game. Santana Moss not available. You think Ed Hockley got a size too small so he could show off his he muscles? Threw it right in the dryer. <laughs> Shrink this bad boy down. Here's Portis. Clinton Portis pushing the pile, and he is brought down right at the marker. Looks like they're going to give him enough for a first down Washington. You know, those yes, are the they are. Excuse me, Joe. Those are the types of runs, really, that 
that Clinton Portis likes. I mean, he likes anything where he's able to get going downhill right away. And as you can tell, for a guy his size, he's not an overly big guy, but he has tremendous power. And he's a very physical runner for a guy that is no bigger than what he is. Lined up in the slot. Brunel with time, airs it out. Antoine Randall L, and they're going to throw a flag on Henry. That's against Dallas and Anthony Henry. Well, they go with the three wide receivers to the one side, and then they get Antoine Randall L up the sideline against Henry. Defense, number 42. Automatic first down. And that's the contact that was made. Easy call for the official. Now, what we've seen already here in this first drive for the Redskins is they're trying to force the issue and get the ball up the field, something they have not done a lot here in recent games. Yeah, I was going to say, what we've seen in this first drive for the Redskins is what these fans have been waiting to see from the Redskins all year. First down, Washington. And a handoff to Clinton Portis, picking his way over the right side, and he is... Horse collared by Brady James, eight of two. You know, let's be honest. They, they made a big investment in two receivers. They make the trade for Brandon Lloyd. They give up a third and fourth round pick to San Francisco. They sign Antoine Randall L. Combined signing bonus of twenty-one and a half million dollars, and coming in, combined twenty-nine catches and one touchdown. Four from Clinton Portis. Down to the 10. And on top of that, as far as the players they brought in, they brought in an offensive coordinator in Al Saunders who has enjoyed tremendous success during the five years that he was in Kansas City to help coordinate this collection of talent that they feel that they brought in. There's Al. And his time with Kansas City, and you can see 0405, his Chiefs were number one in the NFL in total offense. Liddell Betts in the backfield. Third down and five. Betts out of the backfield. Has some room to run. Betts out of bounds with a first down. They'll mark him out at the four. First down Redskins. Terrence Newman flipped him out of bounds before Betts could get into the end zone. A gain of six. You're going to see the wide receivers here coming into your screen. And what that does is it collapses. It collapses in the outside contain. As soon as Thrash runs down, then Terrence Newman goes down to cover him. And then there's no one outside to help pick up Liddell Betts. Toss to Portis. Nowhere to go. The entire Dallas defense was there. No game. Second goal. Yeah, I think you look at Washington on this drive and then think back to week two when they lost to the Dallas Cowboys. They had a season low 14% conversion rate on third down. Already here on this possession, they've converted every third down they face. Second and goal. Portis. Nowhere to go. Actually lost half a yard. It's third and goal, and here's another one of those third downs. This time, if Washington converts, they'll take the lead. Well, I think you look at this Dallas Cowboy defense and, and the interior players that they have. Jason Ferguson, Marcus Spears, and Chris Canty, all over 300 pounds. And then when you combine those three interior guys, with a guy like Greg Ellis playing outside linebacker, I mean, it's a big group. It's a big physical group, and that's one of the reasons they've been so dominant against the run this year. Third down and goal. Brunel keeps it, throws it. Another flag. Antoine Randall L. was knocked down by Newman. Automatic first down. 
Well, Terrence Newman's locked up with Antoine Randall. You can see right there in the end zone as, as Randall is trying to pivot out of the route and get separation. Terrence Newman grabbing onto him. Now, Terrence Newman came into this game thinking he was going to be covering Santana Moss for most of the day. I don't know if they're going to max him on Randall L or not. First and goal, Portis. To about the half. Second down and goal. Newman was in on the tackle of Clinton Portis. And what we expected to see, we've seen a lot of number 26 with this opening possession. Yeah, and I think coming into this game that because the Redskins at two and five, not a lot of good things going for them. I think it was important for them to have something positive happen early. However that happened, but in this game so far, the positive has been the way this offense has moved the ball down the field in this first possession. Second down and goal. Portis hooked get there, and he was crunched. That was Ryan Fowler who came up and met Portis in the air and just collapsed him. Yeah, Clinton Portis, he's trying to go over the top. It's like he might have lost his footing just as he started to make his jump. And then Ryan Fowler, as you said. Roy Williams is the guy who came in and got his legs as he was trying to leap. So Clinton Portis wasn't able to jump, get nearly as high as what he had hoped. Third and goal again. That does not get there. And this number four ranked defense for the Dallas Cowboys stiffens up near their own end zone. It's fourth down. Yeah, and I don't see, well, I don't like this decision at all. I think with a team at two and five, and you've had a heck of a drive to get down to this position. And here's the play here to Liddell Betts. And again, it's Roy Williams who comes off the edge unblocked and is able to make the play, but I'd sure like to see the Redskins go for it here in this situation at home in a game that's very important to them. Well, we'll find out. They sent the field goal unit on, then Brunel came on and called timeout. Joe Gibbs may be changing his mind. There has been a change of heart. Joe Gibbs and the Redskins have taken your advice and are going for it on fourth and goal. Well, in most situations, you would settle for the field goal here this early in a ball game. But I just think that when you look at where the Redskins are, this is this is the right decision. They haven't been able to get in yet. On fourth and goal. Portis. No signal yet, and they are marking him short. The Dallas Cowboys have held on defense. And I'm sure we will get another look to see if Portis broke the plane. Well, there just wasn't a lot of movement up front along that offensive line. And it did not look, Joe, like the ball crossed the plane. Marcel celebrates. I agree. Dallas defense holds. So a 14-play drive covering 78 yards and eight and a half minutes off the clock gives the Redskins only more frustration. Daniels says it was Fasano who moved. False start. Offense. Number 80. After this for the goal. First down. Go back to that fourth down play. And you got Brady James who comes up and makes the collision there with Derek Dockery. Dockery just not able to get any movement. And then you've got Brady James finishing off the hit. It looked like had Dockery have been able to move Brady James out, that Clinton Portis coming off the first contact probably would have gotten in the end zone for the score. Now from their own half, wrestled down for a safety. It's Jones. Well, Julius Jones is the guy with the ball here. Looks like Lamar Marshall there, number 98, is the guy who comes in untouched and is able to make the tackle. Two points for Marshall, two points for the Redskins, up early on Dallas. A free kick from McBriar, and it's going to be returned by Sellers. Sellers makes a move. Good field position for the Redskins at the Dallas 45. 
now that Dallas defense, which was on the field for eight and a half minutes, back to work. There's the safety by Lamar Marshall. Redskins, great field position. Up to defense for the Redskins. They watched the Cowboys fall start with the rookie Fasano and then took advantage of the next play. Lamar Marshall racking up the safety and putting the Redskins on top 2-0. Brunel, who started three for three, goes down the middle and has Thrash for the catch inside the 20. Brunel has started four for four, and he hits James Thrash, only his fifth catch of the year. Well, they come off play action here to Clinton Portis. That holds the linebackers. Now you got two deep with Thrash running down the middle. Because of the play action, it holds Aiken Adele, which allows Brunel to then get the ball over his hands before the safeties are able to get there and make a play. Clinton Portis lines up wide to the bottom of your screen, and Sellers carries it inside the 15, picked up five. So this is a Dallas defense that, as I mentioned, had eight and a half minutes on the field. In a blink, they're back out there. And this drive starting at the Dallas 45. The ball's already inside the 15. Well, going back to their first game in week two, the Cowboys played a lot of cover two against this offense, and the Redskins were unable to run the football against seven-man fronts, and they didn't make plays in the passing game. So far, they've been able to make the plays in the passing game to move the ball. Second down and five, and Clinton Portis spreads it out, cuts it up, gets it to the 10. How do you think Romo's played so far? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> yeah. He's the talk coming in. He's in there for two snaps, one of which is a false start and then a safety on a handoff. Now, it's not the way you want to start your offensive possession, obviously, but, you know, I'm impressed right now with what the Redskins have done on both sides of the ball. They seem to be playing with an energy that we've just not seen from them. Third down and two. Blitz from Dallas. Redskins pick it up, and Brunel throws on the run, and it's nearly picked off. Should have been by Henry. He was in front of Brandon Lloyd and had it go into and out of his hands. Fourth down. Yeah, that was a that was a risky throw by Mark Brunel. Very fortunate there that Henry did not intercept that ball. Anthony Henry clearly has inside position when the throw was made. There was nowhere that Mark Brunel could have fit that one to give Brandon Lloyd an opportunity to make a catch. So that's the first incompletion. It was very nearly the fourth interception of the year by Brunel and now Novak, who's 0 for 2 on the year after taking over for John Hall. It's a knuckleball through from 28 yards. So it's a 5 to nothing Redskins lead here at the start. So the Redskins have come close twice and not punched it into the end zone, but have a safety from their defense. Lamar Marshall have a field goal from Nick Novak and a five to nothing lead. And the Cowboys will get it. And at some point, we will get to see how Tony Romo plays against this Washington defense. Well, I think for Washington, I mean, as well as they played here in the early part of this ball game to only be up 5-0. It's got to be a little bit disappointing, especially not being able to punch that one in for the touchdown. Yeah, especially in a game they have to win. This is Skyler Green on the return. And the rookie crosses the 20, knocked down at the 23, and we go down to Pam Oliver. Hi, Pam. Hey there, Joe. Well, clearly the Washington Redskins are a desperate team. You talk to people on the team, they say, no way should we be 2-5. and five. I posed this question to Mark Brunel before the game. I said, well, what is the problem? He said it's a number of things. For one thing, we're not consistent on offense. Some people I spoke with privately, though, Joe, were more direct. They said it's chemistry. It's lacking in the coaches and staff among the players. All right, Pam, thank you. Well, this has been the chemistry major, Tony Romo. He changed the entire mood in Dallas with his start last week against Carolina. He tosses it to Julius Jones, and Jones picks up five. The offensive line did not get the job done near their own end zone. They've got Gerard at center. Colombo at right tackle. He has persevered all season long. He was the surprise starter season opener. 
down in Jacksonville. And on the backs and receivers, Julius Jones, but the guy who's been punching it in for Dallas is Marion Barber. More a third down back, second and five. Romo pumps twice, and now chased out of bounds. Philip Daniels there for Washington. No game. This defense, it's surprising that under Greg Williams, they're ranked 26th in the NFL. Last year, they were ninth. The year before, they were third. And a lot of it has to do with play of the linebackers and the injuries to the cornerbacks who were finally starting, Carlos Rogers and Sean Springs. That's right, Joe. This defense under Greg Williams has always been built around the linebackers. These linebackers this year, for various reasons, have not played as well as they have in previous years. Third and five. Quick setup, and Romo just throws it away. That'll be grounded. Hit by Sean Taylor. There was no receiver in the area. You wonder if Taylor will get flagged for hitting Romo low. But either way, Romo avoided the sack. That's what Williams is saying. Let's get the call. There are two fouls on the play. Personal foul, roughing the passer. Defense, number 21, hit at the knees of the quarterback. Intentional grounding, offense on the quarterback. Finley's offset, third down. So you replay third down, and Romo was just getting rid of it for his life, and Taylor went down at his knees. Well, and here's Sean Taylor. He's the guy who's coming on the blitz. They bring Archuleta as well inside. But you just can't go low on the quarterback. I mean, I, I talk about it. I think they're overprotective of the quarterback. There's the throw within the pocket that warranted the intentional grounding call. But they're very clear in the rules this year that they're not going to allow hits high to a quarterback to his helmet, and you can't hit him low. So it's third and five again. Quick throw and a pass broken up. Good play by Kenny Wright with Whitten, the intended receiver. So Kenny, Kenny Wright finally getting an opportunity to play within the role that he was brought in to play. He's had to start the first seven ball games of the season due to the injuries to Sean Springs as well as, well as Carlos Rogers. Now they're able to use him as the third back, and that's where he was designed to play when they brought him in from Jacksonville this offseason. A little bit of a frantic start from this Dallas offense and Tony Romo high snap from Breyer booms it. And Antoine Randall L on the return starting from his own 25 out to the 34. As you look at the Redskins their two wins this year have come against the AFC and their numbers against NFC opponents an 0 3 record. 33 offensive drives one touchdown and only one play over 25 yards. So Joe Gibbs in his return 18 and 21 since rejoining the Redskins organization the Hall of Famer trying to find the right combination on offense and people believe the clock is ticking on how long he'll be around here to witness what the Skins fans hope will be a rebirth. Over the middle, Brunel has Cooley wide open, and he dropped it. He was about to get plastered by Roy Williams, and Cooley had it in his hands and just let it go. Well, and those are the plays that ultimately translate into points on a drive. Cooley gets off the ball pretty clean. Again, down the middle versus that two-deep safety look. But Cooley just never had possession of the ball. Initially, it looked like he did, and the ball came loose, and it would have been ruled a fumble. But as you can see, he never had possession of it. You can also see the eyes of Cooley. You know the reputation of Roy Williams. He knows he's waiting in the middle for him. And once that bobble started, Cooley had no chance. Second down and 10. They fake a reverse, and Portis not able to even turn and receive the pass. Let's go for a game break and check in with Chris Rose. Hi, Joe. The Giants looking to win their fifth straight overall, taking on Houston. Tiki Barber leads the NFL in rushing. Doesn't have a touchdown, but let's change that. His first of the year puts the G-Men up 7-zip. Back to Joe, Troy, and Pam. All right, so 
Tiki Barber leading the NFL in rushing yardage finally gets in the end zone and here's Portis. Yeah, you see Portis, Kevin Burnett, the linebacker, he's grabbing him by the shirt tail there. Clinton Portis was expecting to get the pass interference call, but he didn't get it. Third and ten. Redskins just get it away and Brunel has it knocked out of his hand. Right now they're calling that a live ball, now a late call with an incomplete pass. And a flag has been thrown in the area of a hold. It was DeMarcus Ware who knocked it away. Illegally touching the pass. Offense, number 77. Penalties decline. Fourth down. Can't hit the lineman first, and it's Randy Thomas. It doesn't matter. Is It's now fourth down, and that drive didn't go anywhere after the drop by Cooley. Well, there's Chris Samuels on his own. They don't give him much help. In fact, hardly any help at all. Now, if a guy comes in and hits the quarterback's arm, they shouldn't be penalized then for the ball hitting an offensive lineman first. Either way, it's declined, and here is a punt from Derek Cross. Two and a half to go, first quarter. Skyler Green waiting for it. Parcells trusting his rookie back at the 15. And a penalty flag comes in as Green gets it out to the 23. So we'll get the call first and then learn more about Tony Romo. If there's anything more to learn, this guy's life has been an open book over the last two weeks. During the kick, personal foul, grasping the face mask, receiving team, number 32. Half the distance to the goal, first down. It's Marcus Coleman. Right in the middle of your screen, there's. Well, that could have gone either way, and you wonder. You've got Adi Jamo on the other side for Washington. He was just as guilty. And now McCauley, I think, reversed the call. I was going to say it looked like it was on Jamo. Well, I, yeah, and they got the number wrong as well. It was 37, Abram Elam. No, they, no, they're, they're calling it against Washington now against Adi Jamo. So McCauley pointed the wrong way. Yes. Kicking team, number 32 during the kick. 15-yard penalty from the previous spot. Fourth down. So now what McCauley is saying is they're going to go back and re-punt. There's the ball control. So far, Dallas has had it for under a minute and a half, and Washington has dominated the time of possession. So Washington will go back and re-punt as opposed to tacking the 15-yard penalty on the end of what was not much of a run back by Skylar Green. And we'll start this thing all over again. The ball will be moved back inside the 20 to the 19-yard line. So Dallas should come out of this with very good field position. Yeah, either way, they just added the yards to the end of the result. They would have had good field position then. They should get good field position here as well. Depending on what Green does, and Frost gets off a much better punt. Green on the return. Skyler Green can't make the 40. Here are the four things remaining that the world doesn't know about Tony Romo. But now the world will know. Favorite movie, The Natural. I'm in there with him on that one. Celebrity crush, Jessica Simpson. I can't fight him on that. First job, maintenance man. So we show Carl Spackler. And he attempted to qualify for the last two U.S. Opens, which I would have no chance. Uh, he is a good golfer. His favorite movie there being The Natural, Roy Hobbs. What number did he wear? Number nine. Number nine. So Wonder Boy hands the ball to Julius Jones, who tries the left side, and Julius picks up four. You know, in talking with Bill Parcells the other night as to why he made the change to Tony Romo, he said he looked at his team and saw that they were pretty good in all of the major categories that offense and defense are, are measured in. And where they were struggling was in sacks, turnovers, and penalties, and a big part of the the turnovers and the sacks were due to the play at quarterback and just felt that by bringing Tony Romo in, they could improve that. And so far, they have. 
Second and six. A blitz from Washington. Pass complete to Terrell Owens. Owens, oh, so good after he makes the catches out of bounds inside the 40. That's what makes him lethal as a receiver. Well, this offensive line does a good job of picking up the blitz. We expected that Washington would do some of that. You see Julius Jones step up and make a block. And then Terrell Owens just finds the hole there. A little bit of a zone blitz. And as you said, Joe, once he's got the ball in his hands, he's as tough a receiver in the National Football League to bring to the ground. Romo went to Terrell Owens with his first throw last week. And now it's Whitten who leaves too soon. Ball start. Offense. Number 82. Five-yard penalty. First down. Why is this a big game? A look at the standings in the NFC East. The Giants have that lead. Chris Rose told us at home over Houston. They lead the way at 5-2. and two. They haven't lost since that debacle up in Seattle. Dallas, a game over 500. Philadelphia's off this week. And the Redskins at the bottom at 2-5. and five. Yeah, and Washington being the only... Romo somehow got it back and then gets rid of it for an incomplete pass. That was a good recovery by Tony Romo after Warwick Holdman knocked it away from his throwing hand. Well, it sure was because it looked like they had problems there on the center exchange is why the ball went to the ground. But, you know, normally as a quarterback, you're told just fall on it there and not risk picking it up and then losing it. And is just able to get it out and avoid a bad play. Second down and 15 with 52 seconds left here in the first. Timeout Dallas. This is the kind of noise that a crowd of 91,704 can make. I think it's a combination, Troy, of the crowd noise and then what Washington is doing defensively. Bill Parcells knew it coming in. Greg Williams told us they were going to do it coming in. They are going to line up and come after Tony Romo. Yeah, and I think that for any young quarterback, you come into the game expecting that. In fact, Bill Parcells said that they had spent a lot of time working on the perimeter blitzing this week because it's what he expected Greg Williams and this Redskins defense to do. Unlike when Drew Bledsoe plays, then they get a lot of the blitzes through up inside the A-gaps between the guard and the centers. So they have worked on it. They expect it. But then ultimately, how well do you execute against it? You know, I'm really proud of you because you've kept your concentration while Sam Donaldson is only one booth over to our right. <laughs> how have you done it? Well, I don't know. Uh, you know, I mean, I'm a pro. <laughs> right? isn't, that the, isn't that the key? There's one of the 16 assistant head coaches for the Redskins. I was expecting Sam to be a little nervous having him sit over there next to me. I'm sure he is. Second and 15, Julius Jones. Inches shy of the 40, and it's third and long, which you know is the last thing Bill Parcells wants for his young quarterback. He's young and experienced, not young in age. He's been around. Romo has. It's his fourth year, and if you ask Parcells, and he told us this, Troy, before the first game of the season, they're proud of how they have groomed this kid to be ready for the starting spot now. Yeah, Bill Parcells is pleased with the development and the way he has brought him along so that he would have a chance to be successful. Off the edge, it's Marshall on a blitz, and it's Terrell Owens on the catch. First down, Dallas. Lamar Marshall almost got there, but a 16-yard completion to Terrell Owens gets Dallas a first down. Well, and that's just one of the things that Tony Romo does a good job of. Even when he's got pressure on his in front of him, he gets the ball out so quick. And as you see on the outside, Terrell Owens running a corner route. Kenny Wright playing the underneath coverage, but there was a huge void in that zone where Owens made the play. 16-yard completion on third and 13. So the kid comes through for Dallas. First down inside the 25, down 5 nothing of the Cowboys. Back after this. As we start the second quarter, here's Dallas with a first down at the Redskin 24. Julius Jones. 
Adams takes it over the right side, and Julius Jones is knocked down right at the marker. John Taylor on the stop, and for Jones, who's putting together his best year in the NNL, he picked up uh, nine and a half. It'll be about a half yard shy of a first down. Well, Julius Jones, I mean, he's he's been much more consistent here in recent weeks than what he had been previously. And, you know, he's a guy who they they very much are waiting on to just take it to the next level. He's that type of back. Jones gets it again, and Julius brought down at the marker. Depends on the spot. Cornelius Griffin, who the Redskins are happy to have back, makes the stop. It's a first down for Dallas. There are the offensive leaders. Not much so far. But down only five to nothing. It's a first down with the ball inside the Washington 14-yard line. Marion Barber splits time with Julius Jones and Oliver Hoyt, former linebacker, is the fullback. Play action from Romo. Over the middle. Incomplete looking for Terry Glenn. Second down. You know, this is an area of the field for the Dallas Cowboys inside the red zone that they've been very efficient all season long. Tied for first in the National Football League in red zone offense. That time they try getting Tony Romo outside the pocket and allow him to, to have a good look at his receivers. The Redskins doing a good job in coverage. Something they can do more of with Romo because of his legs. He can move around better than Bledsoe. Second and ten. And a handoff to Julius Jones. Julius to the 10-yard line. Third down coming up as Jones picks up three. I think this is a pretty pretty big play coming up here for this Redskins defense. Again, going back to what we said there in that first quarter, Joe, how well Washington has played. Have played with great energy on both sides of the ball, but yet by not getting the one punched in for the touchdown to only be leading 5-0, if Dallas is able to convert and score a touchdown on this possession to be down 7-5, it would be extremely disappointing for the Redskins. Tenth play of this drive, third and seven. Play action again. Romo flips. Glenn, touchdown Dallas. Terry Glenn gets the touchdown, and just like that, the Cowboys are out in front. the offense will stay out on the field. Terry Glenn motions down. He comes clear across the field. Sean Taylor just allows him to run by him, and that's what created the separation then for Tony Romo. Troy, here we are with basically 13 minutes left in the first half, and the Cowboys are going to go for two. Yeah, they're going to try to make it a three-point game. Since the Redskins have five points, personally, I think it's too early in a game to be going for two points. I don't think you start making those decisions until the second half. I disagree with this call. The chart would say this is what you do, but I don't always agree with what the chart says, particularly early in games. Well, if nothing else, they'll force Washington to take a timeout. Dallas two for two this season going for the two-point conversion. They'll try to make it 8-5 when we come back. Okay, so now the two-point try. In the NFL this year, teams are 14 out of 23 trying to convert for two points. And this is where Romo does like the quarterback draw. Sprint right. Romo throws and the pass broken up. And we'll say the name. Kenny Wright for the second time today. Patrick Creighton, the intended receiver. Now you go back and take a look at the touchdown throw. that when we come back the touchdown throw from Romo to Glenn which puts Dallas up by one Bye. Cowboys have scored a touchdown no extra point failed on the two-point try Washington has a safety to their credit and a field goal and that's it Vanderjet with his typical short kickoff gets it into the arms of Rock Cartwright and Cartwright 
gets to the 29 yard line they will give him the 30 and then Cartwright hit a wall okay now we'll go back and look okay. at the touchdown watch Jason Witten here he's the tight end but he's blocking Philip Daniels and he got away with a hold you can see him there twice he had a clutch of his jersey and as Witten gets up he's looking for a flag he's, look, he's looking all around to see if there's any yellow laundry on the field but then Romo does a good job of getting back to his third receiver there, Terry Glenn, for the touchdown. Marcel's talking to Glenn, one of his favorite receivers that he's had. As Brunel drops back to throw over the middle again and zings it on a line to Brandon Lloyd. 17-yard completion, and Brunel brought out the fastball for that throw. That was a very good route here by Brandon Lloyd. Watch the way he pushes up the field, threatens Roy Williams as though he's going to go by him, gets him turned, and then once he snaps off the route, Mark Brunel puts it right on him. So, so many times these receivers, especially the ones that have speed, can create tremendous separation by threatening somebody and making them think they're going deep. <laughs> First down, a toss, Clint Fortis nowhere to go. Got a hand up under the face mask, no flag. No gain on the play, and Greg Ellis was the first one there for Dallas. Next Sunday, Fox NFL Sunday, it is a doubleheader day. Redskins and Eagles early, or Packers and Vikings, and then late, the Cowboys will be in the desert, the Saints and Steelers, Rams and Seahawks. Tell you, Joe, so far they have given the ball to Clinton Portis 12 times, and he's only gotten 19 yards. I know he wants the ball, but it's hard to keep calling runs when you're not more productive than that. On second down and 10, the pass is behind Betts, makes the catch, ridden out by Adele. And a gain of three. Third down coming up. I think so much of their struggles, you know, running the football have, have been with within this offensive line. I mean, when I watch Clinton Portis, I, I still think he's a great runner. He has tremendous power and burst. He's a very physical runner. And when he gets a crease, he makes the most of the, of the opportunity that he has. But last week against Indianapolis and so far today, there's just not been a lot of running room for him. Third down and six, a blitz coming from Dallas. The pass complete to Thrash for a first down. Eight yards on third down, and Mark Brunel has had a very effective first down. He sure has, Joe, and he's under pressure here. I mean, they're bringing Roy Williams and linebackers right up the gut. It's a hard thing for a quarterback if you don't get great protection, and he did not get it. By trying to block Roy Williams, they let DeMarcus Ware go. And that's who got the hit on Brunel, but he's able to get it out in time to Thrash for the first down. Two catches by Thrash. Play action from Brunel. Has time, that thing's batted, and it ends up going through the arms of Cooley. Is going end over end after Aiken Adele got his hands on that pass. Wait a minute, look at that score. Miami up 14 to 3 over Chicago. And Kansas City taking it to the Rams in St. Louis. You know, every week we see some score like that where you just shake your head. And how anybody can determine beforehand what's going to happen in these games is beyond me. I'll say this Jimmy Johnson on our pregame show, Fox NFL Sunday, thought. But that game was going to be a lot tougher for Chicago than people believe going in. It's tough now, down 17-3. The only undefeated team in the NFC. To the 35 is Portis. He gains six. Third down coming up. Well, and even then, I mean, watch Clinton Portis and how he, he's able to create plays on his own. He gets a straight dive handoff, starts to the left, and then makes a guy miss that's right in the hole in order to pick up some extra yards. I mean, he's got tremendous speed, and you just wonder with a guy like him who's no bigger than he is, as physical a runner as he is, you know, how long is he going to actually be able to play? That's not a concern of his. He's going to play his style for as long as he can, but he does take a pounding. High snap. Grinnell trying to get on the football, and now the scramble. Dallas says they have it, and they do. 
Aiken Adele comes out of the pile with a football. Then spikes it. There's no flag thrown for that as Brunel never got his hands on it altogether. So we'll take a break on third down the high snap. Aiken Adele recovers it. Dallas gets the football as they lead the Redskins by one. The big... Defense keeping the Redskins out of the end zone. Terry Glenn for the Cowboys getting into the end zone at 6-5 Dallas. Redskins just turned it over for only the seventh time this season, and Witten makes the catch at the 45-yard line. Gain of five, and we go back to the turnover. Brunel wasn't ready for it. No, you can tell. I mean, as soon as he starts to turn his head and then look at the center, the ball's on top of him. And the other part of that is rather than falling on it, he decided to pick it up just like what Tony Romo did, but he failed to secure the ball, and that's why they lost it. Second and five. Handoff is to Julius Jones, and Jones picks up three, and we go to Chris Rose for a game break. All right, Joe, here's another turnover by a number eight. Rex Grossman looking and finding... Jason Taylor, who returns it for the score, his sixth career touchdown, and tell Jimmy Johnson he was right on the mark that the Dolphins would give the Bears trouble, Joe. You are correct, Chris, and thanks for watching Fox NFL Sunday, which starts one hour prior to kickoff every Sunday. America's number one pregame show. Third down and two for Dallas. Barber in the backfield gets it on a handoff and plows straight ahead for a first down. Hitting the hole extremely hard and picking up four yards. Pretty good one-two punch they've got here with Julius Jones and Marion Barber. Yeah, Marion Barber comes in in those types of situations. He comes in down around the goal line and he does everything exceptionally well. And when he's had his opportunities, He's really made the most of them. He's made significant contributions when he's been on the field. Romo with time. Looked like a hold, but there's no flag, and Glenn on the back end of it, it's out of his reach. There's no flag thrown, and for the second time in the last two possessions, it looked like the Cowboys got away with a hold. Well, it, sure should, it sure looked like it, Joe. I mean, he was launched in the air. Here he is here. Number 96, Cornelius Griffin, just keep an eye on him. Marco Rivera is the guy who he's engaged with. But right there is where <laughs> it looked like there was some kind of hold. And then here's the throw on the other end, just barely off the fingertips of Terry Glenn. Second down and 10. Handoff is to Jones. Had to secure the ball first, and Julius is down to the 44-yard line, a gain of five. You know, this offense in previous years under Bill Parcells has always been based around running the football. He's always run the ball a lot. However, in previous seasons, they've not run the ball particularly well. This year, however, their yard per carry average is up. They're running the ball still like they used to, but they're getting a lot more out of it than what they ever have. That's a guy who likes to run the ball. It's third down and five. A blitz, a completion, a first down to Creighton. So Tony Romo, give him credit. He is standing there taking hits, getting rid of it on time, and completing it to Patrick Creighton for eight. Yeah, Sean Taylor was coming off the edge on the blitz. Now you're going to see Tony Romo. He knew exactly where he was going with the ball, and that was Patrick Creighton. And he's just hoping that Patrick Creighton wins on the route, and he just gets the ball into his hands. Again, the Redskins bring pressure. But because Romo was on a three-step drop getting the ball out, nothing that the defense could do about it. And off Jones. Julius down inside the 30 to the 29, gains seven on first down. 
as Romo directing Fasano, the rookie tight end, to the other side of the formation. That's right where Julius Jones took it. Well, so far, what I've noticed is that the Cowboys on first down are having a lot of success. So they're not getting into a lot of long down situations unless they've had penalties. We're seeing a lot of second and mediums and third and shorts. A lot easier to call plays for Bill Parcells and those down in distances. Second and three, a toss to Jones running right with blocking in front of him gets to the edge and has a first down out of bounds at the 19 yard line, a gain of 10. The Dallas Cowboys come into this game with the fifth ranked offense in the NFL and Jones has been a big part of that. Yeah, they bring linebacker blitz inside. The Cowboys have the right call on. They run the sweep to the outside. Good block in there by Anthony Fasano. He was lined up at the, at the fullback position, and that's what gave Julius Jones the corner. Here's Julius Jones split out wide to the bottom of your screen. Romo just gets it away, and what a good play over the middle. Witten, the intended receiver, and Washington got his hand in there and broke up the pass and if Marcus Washington is not there to take that away look at the field here and how much room Witten has if he slants that in there and is able to get the ball into his hands a touchdown but Marcus Washington whose his strength is not pass coverage does a great job of knocking that ball down and Troy it's a little things you see from Romo they just get the play away it's a wide snap he one hands it he finds Witten makes a good throw but Washington made the play Second and ten. Quick throw to Terrell Owens. Trying to make a move on Rodgers. Rodgers did his best and forced T.O. out after a gain of four. You know, again, Washington Redskins are just coming with maximum pressure and not worrying about giving safety help on the last two plays. On that one, again, you can see there's no help back here. And that means Carlos Rodgers has to make a play because if he gets by him here, T.O. scores a touchdown. A good job by Carlos Rodgers. So the Redskins are just daring Romo to hang in there long enough and find somebody open behind the defense. Third down. Romo throws to Creighton. Patrick Creighton is wrestled out of bounds by Carlos Rodgers. It's fourth down. It was a great series there by defensive coordinator Greg Williams. He brought pressure all three snaps and was able to effectively get pressure on Tony Romo. But more importantly, when the ball came out, his defense was able to make the tackle. This for Greg Williams, the first time all 11 projected starters have all been in there to start to begin the game. Lander Jack hits from 33. And it's just your typical 9-5 to five game here. The home of the Redskins. Washington trailing, about to get it back. Bill Parcells hoping his team can get on a roll. They get the win at Carolina. They're here in Washington, and they are on the road in the desert next week against the Cardinals, who are obviously struggling. Vanderjat, one of his better ones of the year. Cartwright from inside the 10. Hit by Roy Williams and knocked down at the 35-yard line. So Roy Williams and Keith Davis, the two starting safeties, are in on kickoff coverage. I'll tell you, if there's any head coach in the league that we talk to that mentions special teams every time we talk to him, it's Bill Parcells. I mean, it's something that's on his radar when they're drafting and certainly something when they're preparing for a team during the week. Yeah, and I think that's pretty typical of all head coaches. Bill Parcells talks about it more, but that doesn't mean it's more important with him than it is the other teams because it's a big part of being able to win football games in this league. Good starting field position, and Antoine Randall L gets it on an end around, and he hops out of bounds before suffering a hit at the hands of Roy Williams, game nine. Well, they run this in order to keep the outside, whether it's defensive end or outside linebacker, honest. And you're going to see Greg Ellis. You know, he made the switch from defensive end to outside linebacker. He comes a little bit flat. And by doing that, 
It allows Antoine Randall to outrun him to the corner. Second and one. Handoff is to Portis. And Portis hit a wall. Penalty flag comes in. Portis got enough for the first down. Davis came in and delivered the hit. And we'll get the call from Terry McCauley. Personal foul, unnecessary roughness. Defense, number 29, grasping the helmet opening. 15-yard penalty, first down. I don't even know that he got the helmet so much as he just got underneath the shoulder pad. I know they put in the horse collar rule named after Roy Williams when he grabbed the back of the, the, the shoulder pad. Yeah, they might have to come out with a new rule for Keith Davis when he grabbed the front of the shoulder pad and pulled the guy completely backwards. You know, Keith Davis getting his second start now after starting 15 games last year, and that's really what he brings. I mean, you don't want to have the penalties, but he's a very physical player that sometimes is very susceptible then in pass coverage. And no kiss for Keith going to the sideline after that big penalty <laughs> he got last week. Little toss to Clinton Portis. Outruns Ellis. Outruns the defense. Portis, touchdown. today that was a big one 38 yards and a touchdown Washington back on top down his seventh rushing touchdown of the season then you watch the block here by Brandon Lloyd on Anthony Henry just does a good job he's again securing the corner and that won't show up in the box scores tomorrow but very valuable in allowing Clinton Portis to score the touchdown and I don't know if this is in the category of a big or a small point but you talked about it and you hear coaches talk about it when you go for an early two-point conversion and you don't make it, you're constantly chasing that three-point the rest of the day. So now it's a three-point game. Had the Cowboys just taken the extra point, now you're only down by two, and a field goal is a difference in the game. Well, it's something to keep an eye on as we move throughout this ball game today. Kind of a high popped-up kick, and somehow on the run, Al Johnson, a backup center, makes the catch. He showed good hands. You know, they've already moved a linebacker to fullback. Maybe now Al Johnson will be playing wide receiver for the Cowboys. That was impressive. He caught it on the run. It was as impressive as the catch was. It was as unimpressive a kick. I don't know what they were trying to accomplish there. Evidently scared to death of the returning abilities of Skyler Green. up kick and decent field position at the start for the Cowboys down by three. Romo pumps, drops it underneath and the catch is made by Oliver Hoyt, the aforementioned converted linebacker. And we are approaching the two-minute warning. Dallas has two timeouts left. And with two minutes to go, officially right now when we come back. Dallas will have a second down as they trail by three here to the Redskins. 12-9, two minutes to go. Dallas with a ball, trailing by three, coming up on the Visa Halftime Report. Kurt, Terry, Howie, and Jimmy will have scores and highlights from around the league. And the Fox Sports ticker will keep you updated with up-to-the-second stats. If you want to hear more about Detroit leading over Atlanta, you want to hear about Miami. That'll be five yards on Dallas. Miami leading at Chicago. Number 76. Five-yard penalty. Second down. That's Flozell. Here's some of the leaders from around the NFL at the start of the day. Good start for the Saints. They need the win after suffering that big home loss last week to the Ravens. 
Good first half for Breeze. Kevin Jones, part of the reason why Detroit is leading Atlanta. And Joey Galloway involved in that Saints-Tampa Bay game. 71 yards and a touchdown. On second down, the pass broken up. Sean Springs. It was a risky throw there by Tony Romo. It looked like Sean Springs could have very easily have intercepted that ball. I know, I know that's not something the Redskins do much of. One of the worst in the National Football League intercepted passes, but he was able to get a hand on it and knock it down. Washington going with six defensive backs here on this possession. Third and 11. Romo steps up over the middle, hits Terrell Owens. Big first down, Dallas into Washington territory. And even with six defensive backs, if you give the quarterback time to throw the football, it gives these wide receivers an awful lot of time to move around and find the holes within these zones. Another big third down conversion for Romo and the Cowboys. They have two timeouts left. Romo drops it off for Marion Barber. And Barber gets whacked. Marcus Washington coming in, a gain of four for Dallas, and the clock continues to run. the two-minute offense fires and completes it another first down Terry Glenn and Dallas will use one of its two remaining timeouts so one timeout left and a first down for the Cowboys just outside the Redskin 35 down three Bill Parcells did his best during the week after the start and victory for Tony Romo as young quarterback saying well we'll find out if it was a lucky punch nothing lucky about being able to move the ball today he has been under fire all day from this Redskin defense first down Dallas and a handoff to Marion Barber picks his way inside the 30 wrestled down at the 29 a gain of six this has been a good drive by the Dallas Cowboys and you get the idea that Tony Romo is much more comfortable in this hurry up offense than at any other time here in the first half because it's the type of style that he likes to play run around find your guy and get the ball in his hand out of the shotgun penalty flag comes flying and Romo throws it away 26 seconds left Dallas with one timeout. Personal foul, chop block, offense, number 24, 15-yard penalty, second down. Boy, that is a big one from Marion Barber. That is going to move the ball back toward midfield. Well, there he is, and once the guy's engaged, you can't then go low on him. And you could argue whether or not Flozell Adams was engaged with Lamar Marshall, but that's what the official call was made. That is the seventh Dallas penalty for 71 yards, and this one moves the ball back near the 45-yard line. And it's second down and 19 with 26 seconds left. Well, the one thing that Tony Romo has done a good job of, both today as well as last week, is overcome these types of situations with penalties and long yardage down. Romo steps up and throws and hits Creighton. Patrick Creighton with a first down inside the 20, and Romo will use the last timeout. Another big conversion by the young Tony Romo. Has he been impressive? 12 seconds left. The ball inside the Redskin 20. For the best in HD, get Direct TV. Next Visa Halftime Report is sponsored by Visa, proud sponsor of the NFL. Life takes Visa. The road show continues with the Visa Halftime Report. Kurt Nanapi along with Terry Howie and Jimmy. And you know, there's a weird score in this Dallas Washington game, TV, but it did not get there the conventional way. 12 12 right now at halftime. Oh, it did not. Terrell Owens getting ready to crank it up. Had 10 catches last week. Out of the eye from the goal line, four attempts. 
do the Redskins try? Do not get in. Clinton Ford to stop for no gain. Cowboys take over. Very next play, Julius Jones nailed by La Lamar Marshall. Safety two to nothing Redskins. So early second quarter, Tony Rome with play action left. Looks right, nobody there. Slides to the left. Catches Terry Glenn crossing a deep crossing route. Touchdown pass of 10 yards. Six to five Cowboys. And then fake the tackle. Pitch off left. How are you like this? 38 yard give it to Portis down the sidelines. He goes touchdown 12 to 12 now. We're all tied up at oh, halftime. Cowboys and the Redskins. Plexigo Burris in street clothes for the Giants. Bad Watch back. Tiki Barber. Tiki Barber does not have a touchdown this season. He will now, folks. 16-yard touchdown run. First of the season, 7 of the Giants over the Houston <coughs> Texans. And then the great defensive end for the Giants, Michael Strahan, locked up with Zach Wieger. Hurts his foot, has to leave this football game. 7-3 is your half hour. Early third quarter score, I should tell you. Now, moving right along, Atlanta, Kevin Mathis having to be carted off the field in Detroit with a neck injury. Watches the Lions, Kevin Jones off tackle, turns on the speed, bounces to the outside. 35-yard touchdown, it's the Lions 10 to nothing over Atlanta. And it's Frank Caliendo's upset pick with the Lions over Atlanta. Michael Vick says, not so fast, my friend. He finds his favorite receiver, tight end Algie Crumpler, 19-yard strike, 10 to 7 Lions. And then... Kevin Jones again, two-yard run, second touchdown on the day, 17 to seven, and then touchdown done, goes in from the left tackle, heck of a ball game, 17 to 14, Lions at home over the Atlanta Falcons at that halftime. Drew Brees, New Orleans Saints traveling to Tampa to take on the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Brees back, Mark Colston, back of the end zone, 15-yard score. Here we go, seven and and Saints over the Buccaneers. Breeze, cover two, you roll right, get a safety out of the middle, split the middle with Devery Henderson. He'll take his 52 yards for the touchdown, 14 and up to the Saints over the Bucs. Then, Joy Galloway, post route, what a great throw, 17-yard strike. Look, there it is, nice job, young rookie. Good job. There's my man Galloway. Goes over and runs Tony Saragusa on the stomach for some good luck. Good luck, yeah. 17 to 14 <laughs> Saints on the road over Tampa Bay Buccaneers. In Buffalo, a Brett Favre interception returned for a touchdown by London Fletcher, the only TD in that game. All How right. about Miami? Oregon Duck. Joey Harrington looking right for the Miami Dolphins. Nobody there. Going to run. Then pulls up. Finds Marty Booker back of the end zone. Nice job, Joey. Five-yard strike. Dolphins up 7-3. Rex Grossman rolling right. Did not see Jason Taylor. Oh, and by the way, he was standing right in front of him. <laughs> Taylor then takes it up. 20 yards wrong. down. 14-3 Dolphins sometimes. It just happens. That's wrong. Happen. Grossman, though. Comes back, finds Lucin Mohammed, 30-yard strike, heck of a ball game. Jimmy Johnson said on the pregame show, Dolphins will win this game because their defense I is playing hard. Yes, win. you did. Well, a couple of other scores to look at most one side. It's Baltimore all over Cincinnati. In St. Louis, it's all Chiefs so far in that one. And Jacksonville starting David Garrard, and they lead 20 to nothing over the Tennessee Titans at intermission. All right, Jimmy, the reason this game is 12-12 is a decision you did not like by the Cowboys. Well, it's an interesting call by Bill Parcells. Even though the chart says go for two points, you're ahead 6-5, to five, and that would make it a three-point game. Yeah, I think early in the ball game, most coaches will go away from the so-called chart and will go ahead and kick the extra point. Percentage is not with you to make the two-point conversion. The other thing is, early in the game, you've got a new quarterback on the road, kick the extra point. If they'd have done that, they'd be leading at halftime. Bruce, Bruce Kratkowski, who jumped out in the first game versus New Orleans, has struggled as of late, in particular, getting the ball down the football field. And he did early in this football game struggle to get the ball down the field. Got it down the field on the big bomb to Galloway and then hit him on the post that we just saw on the highlight. Getting him off the snide in terms of throwing the ball down the field. They've kept him short, short, short. He needs to get the ball down the field, stretch that. You're letting there. Saunders off the hook because four downs inside the one down and for the Redskins, and they did not score. Can't Probably play with scared money. Can't play with scared money. Scared money. Scared money. Half in a big game in the NFC East. We've seen a little bit of everything. We've seen the Dallas defense tighten up near their own end zone. We've seen a safety from the Redskins defense and Lamar Marshall. We have seen a touchdown from Terry Glenn and then field goals. Man, what's next? Huh? 12-12. Tonight at 30.
ready to start the second half here in Maryland. A 12-12 game. I think we could praise both defenses. I think both quarterbacks have played well. You talked about Brunel. I think Romo's been as impressive in another way that he's faced all these blitzes and he's moved the team. That's right, and he hadn't turned the ball over. I agree that the offense has played well, the defenses overall have played well, and the quarterbacks have. And right now, the big difference in the ball game is the one turnover that Washington had that kept them from at least getting a field goal, which resulted in a field goal, you know, for the Dallas Cowboys. So, tie so ball game. Go. We'll see what happens here in the second half. That's it. That's all we got. Time to watch more football. For the latest in fantasy stats, log on to FoxSports.com. It's powered with MSN, and here are your fantasy numbers. Romo, a good half, 126 yards, a touchdown, 12 of 18. Brunel, a little lower with the numbers, but still effective. A couple of drops, and then the job done by the two running backs. The big one, the 38-yard touchdown run by Clinton Portis, was the single biggest play of that first half. Now the return stylings of Skylar Green. Out to the 25, and that's all. And let's go down to Pam Oliver. Hey there, Joe. It's not that Skins defensive coordinator Greg Williams isn't concerned about Tony Romo, but he's really concerned about the wide receivers. He says they're way too open. we got to do a better job of disrupting them and preventing them from getting in their routes. Bill Parcells said, Bill Parcells said as for the second half, we got to treat this game like it's a brand new one. It's not easy coming in here with this hated rivalry, and he anticipates this ball game coming down to the wire. Back to you. Well, let's see if it does, and it is a brand new game, starting off at 12-12. Julius Jones wrestled down by Taylor. Gain of only one. Halftime stats, they look like this. Remember, within the Redskins rushing yardage, that 38-yard touchdown run on the toss out to Clinton Portis. Total yards about even. Time of possession. Dallas made up a lot of ground early. The ball was held onto by Washington. Second down and nine. Holdman coming on a blitz. Cowboys pick it up, and Romo fires low but caught by Terry Glenn. Gain of seven. Third down and a couple coming up. I tell you, they got Carlos Rogers, who's back off the broken thumb. And for the most part today, he has been on Terrell Owens, at least when Terrell Owens lines up to the offensive left side. And Carlos Rogers has given him about 10 yards as far as where he's lined up on him. Of course, now he's coming up. It does not look like he's going to get safety help. But here he is. He has been playing 10 yards off. Now on this play, he's going to come up and look like try to redirect him. See if Romo goes out there. Third down. He's looking right all the way. Down the sideline for Creighton. Patrick Creighton gets tripped up, and it's another third down conversion by Romo. Springs with the trip up, and Creighton good for 48 yards. Yeah, third and short. Third and short. Washington's not expecting anything down the field like this, but they throw the fade route down the field to Creighton. I'm sure Sean Springs was expecting a shorter route, and when pa Patrick Creighton kept running, he was able to then get the separation from Springs. So a first down at the 19-yard line of the Redskins. to the guys behind him as Julius Jones carries it for three. But Tony Romo shows an awful lot of poise for a guy who's in only his second NFL start. Yeah, and, and what he did there is the one thing that drives Bill Parcells crazy because you're trying to change a play with the clock running down on you, and sometimes the best thing you can do is just snap the ball. And Bill said he's tried to get through to Tony Romo that you can't always get us in the perfect play, that there are other considerations that have to come into play. Second and seven. Romo with time. Hits Witt over the middle. His big tight end knocked down at the 10. A yard shy of a first down. Third and one coming up. 
And I would say, Joe, that if in your second NFL star, if that's the only criticism you're getting from the head coach, you're playing pretty well. Yeah. You know, Romo is tired of hearing about how he grew up a fan of Brett Favre. Bill Parcells doesn't want a farm like Riverboat Gambler quarterback as Julius Jones carries it for a first down. Sometimes Favre obviously will try to cram the ball into spaces he shouldn't. He'll turn it over. He'll also give you the unbelievable and a lot of touchdowns. He wants Romo to tighten it up obviously more than Favre has done over his career. And so far today, he has done just that. He hasn't turned the ball over. Yeah, and you talk about tightening it up. Greg Williams wants this defense to tighten up right here. Something the Cowboys were able to do to the Redskins earlier. First and goal. Jones down to the four. Second and goal. This offensive line for Dallas. I know that they were a much maligned group when Drew Bledsoe was playing because of the number of sacks they were giving up. But I know over the last game and a half and then this game here, they've actually done a pretty good job of protecting Tony Romo, and they've also done a good job here today creating some running lanes for Julius Jones and Marion Barber. and completes Terrell Owens what a catch hung on for the touchdown and you cannot you have to stay on your feet when celebrating a touchdown and that draws a flag so the touchdown to Owens but then he laid down to celebrate and that'll be 15 yards after the play unsportsmanlike conduct offense for 81 Pawning. touchdown counts 15 yards would be assessed on the kickoff. So obviously a little takeoff on him falling asleep in two meetings. He takes his siesta. Well, that's right. And he could use the ball as a prop. And on that one, the ball was a pillow. So he got penalized. Hey, you your Goodell. Hey, the guy gets tired. Maybe he wanted to take a little siesta there just for a second. Yeah. Well, it will hurt the Cowboys on the kickoff. It should give the Redskins... Good field position when they get it back. Romo, impressive today. Like in team meetings, T.O. Hello. Owens had a brief meeting with Bill Parcells after getting the unsportsmanlike conduct flag, which really will penalize Dallas now. Vanderjet kicks off short anyway and kicking from his own 15. Cartwright and Sellers bang into each other, and whatever advantage the Redskins were going to get goes out the window as Sellers, for some reason, goes back and interferes with Rock Cartwright. Redskins with a ball down seven. Roger Goodell signed football, and Paul Tagliabue, longtime NFL commissioner, went to school at Georgetown. Watching in attendance on a celebration by Terrell Owens, and now Brunel airs it out. And the pass is caught. Great adjustment to the football by Brandon Lloyd. He went around Henry to grab it. Well, the Cowboys brought pressure, and the offensive Offense. line does just good enough. Ten-yard penalty, first down. And you see the flag come in. It's a hold against Christian Fourier and that wipes out what would have been a 35 yard completion to Brandon Lloyd who did a great job grabbing that ball in front of Henry. Well, this Fourier there 88 going in motion and it's Demarcus Ware is who he's trying to block and I don't know if it's so much a hold as much as it was Demarcus Ware just going right over the top of him that made it look like a hold. We've seen worse today that has not been fine. <laughs> So it's first and 20. Big penalty on Fourier. Hand off is to Portis. Portis out to the 27, got three. You, know, you go back to last year when Brandon Lloyd was playing for the San Francisco 49ers. The Cowboys played the 49ers, and Brandon Lloyd was matched up a good part of the day on Anthony Henry. He had a big game that, that day 
against Anthony Henry had some big plays down the field much like what we just saw and you get the idea they've gone to him now a couple of times in those situations with Henry on him and they're matched up again second down and 17 pressure on Brunel and it's Ware who ends up on top of Mark Brunel a big loss on second down of nine yards and it's third and forever coming up I think they need to take Christian Fourier off of the responsibility of blocking DeMarcus Ware again Ware instead of going over the top of him on the lat like he did on the last play this time he just goes right around him and Brunel had nowhere to go with the ball that is the first sack by either team today and it brings up third and 26. So think of what could have been. Dallas gets the touchdown. Terrell Owens celebrates, gets the flag. Vanderjet has to kick off from the 15. But Sellers interferes with Cartwright catching the kickoff. And then they get the completion to Lloyd wiped off the books because of a hold by Fourier, and they end up going backward. Well, the Redskins are one of the most penalized teams in the National Football League. And they, they showed it again on that last possession. Came in with the most penalty yardage assessed against him in the lead. Skyler Green doing all he can gets to the 35. So the Cowboys will take it. They're up by seven here over the Redskins in this battle in the NFC East. Providing fill between political ads today. Here we are in the third quarter, and there's Tony Romo since the second quarter last week. Pretty good fill between those political ads. Cowboys and Redskins, 400 yards since the second quarter last week, and he shows some experience by throwing it at the feet of Marion Barber for the incompletion. There was nothing there. A safety on the Cowboys' first drive. Lamar Marshall with a tackle of Julius Jones. Terry Glenn good from 10 yards out from Romo. 38-yard touchdown run by Clinton Portis. And then recently the touchdown throw to Terrell Owens. Celebrated, got the penalty. The Cowboys dodged that bullet and lead by seven as they have the ball. Second and 10 at their own 35. Romo goes down in the arms of Cornelius Griffin. Tried to get up, couldn't get away, and a sack, a loss of nine. Well, we talked about it. They're awfully glad to have Cornelius Griffin back in the lineup. I mean, he's such a big physical guy. He plays the run well, and he's also one of the rare guys that can get pressure on the passer from that defensive tackle position. No, Greg Williams was sure glad to have him back after having missed the last couple of games. Well, they got him back. They've got only two sacks this season from Andre Carter. And Troy Vincent has taken over at safety for Adam Archuleta. Third down and 19. Pass into the arms of Witten and way short of a first down. Ten yards short. Nine-yard completion, fourth down Dallas, and a good series by the Redskins defense. Boy, it sure was an, an important possession there for the Redskins defense. After going down seven points, Dallas going down on the previous possession, getting the touchdown, their offense unable to do anything. It was a nice stop. This clock right here might as well be ticking on the season for the Washington Redskins. They need a victory here today against Dallas. With a record of two and five, this will help. Antoine Randall L. out to midfield with a good punt return of 25 yards. Singleton on the stop. Good field position for the Redskins, who trailed Dallas by seven. That win-loss record includes time in the playoffs for Joe Gibbs in his second go-around here with the Redskins, the Hall of Famer. Number four on the active list in career victories among the head coaches and on first down at Sellers. The fullback gets three. Chris Rose is sitting by with a game break. Chris. 
Joe, tell T.O. to wake up. Might be tied for the division lead after today. In the Meadowlands, David Carr up, over, and in his eighth career rushing touchdown, and the Texans have the three-point lead. Back to Joe, Troy, and Pam. And there was some call for Sage Rosenfels to start that game after he mopped up for David Carr so well in their last game. Carr gets it into the end zone. That's big news for the Redskins, too. Second down and seven. Brunel fires and the pass incomplete. The Delft Betts got hit by Greg Ellis as the ball was getting there, and it's third down Washington. And you take a look at Mike Sellers. He was going to take the middle against this two deep safety look for Dallas, but him and Brandon Lloyd run into each other there. And had Mike Sellers not have fallen down, they would have put a real bind on that safety. And that's where Mark Brunel was looking to go with the ball. That was the the opening within that zone was the throw to Mike Sellers, but then he got knocked down by the collision with Lloyd. Third down and seven. <laughs> Brunel flushed out of the pocket. Throws incomplete for Thrash. And now a penalty flag comes in at the end of the play back in the secondary. And now another flag. A flag was thrown after the initial flag for whatever was going on on the sideline on the Dallas side. There are two fouls on the play. Pass interference, offense, number 87. That penalty's declined. Correction, number 47 for offensive pass interference. Illegally touching the pass. Offense, number 83, went out of bounds, came back in and was first to touch the pass. That penalty's also declined. Fourth down. So it brings up fourth down and a punt on two penalties on that play. Well, and what's unbelievable about it is you got the ball at midfield to start this possession. I mean, the percentages are in the favor of the offense of coming away with at least three points. I mean, the fact that they weren't able to capitalize on that field position because of penalties and lack of execution. Just another poor series there for this Redskins offense. And they went three and a half yards. That's it, down by seven, and now giving the ball back to Dallas. Fair catch called for by Skyler Green. So the Cowboys get it. Ball is marked at the Dallas 16. Romo and T.O. back to work. It's a 19 to 12 Dallas lead. Dallas starting at their own 16 yard line. Five and a half to go, third quarter. And off to Julius Jones, got hit by Kyle Kozar first. Gain of four. Tonight on Fox, the Simpsons are back, all new with their scariest treehouse of horror yet. It all starts tonight at 8 Eastern, 7 Central, right here on Fox. So far in this half, Washington with five total yards of offense. Second and six. Julius Jones again. Brought down just shy of the marker. We'll see if they give Jones enough forward progress for a first down. They do not. It'll be third down and inches. Sean Taylor on that last stop. Cowboys in a hurry up mode, not allowing Washington to substitute. Julius Jones is knocked down at the marker. It depends on the spot. Where the officials are running in, it looks to be enough. Not only did they snap it in a hurry, but they didn't allow their own running back, Julius Jones, to get rid of his limp. After the previous carry, he came back limping. Then got it right away, and we'll see if that is enough for a first down. Let's see how good our line is. Is it by the nose of the ball? It is. Always trust the line to get here on Fox. Line's pretty good. 
Greg Litchie with our first down line, and that's a big one by inches. A fresh set of downs from Dallas. Redskins coming off their bye week. Greg Williams gave the players homework. Sheets to grade their own performance from the first part of the year. Self-evaluations. I don't know if I'd want to see some of those. No word as to whether the coaching staff got sheets, too. Terrell Owens behind the defense drops it. Could have been a backbreaker. Instead, Owens will hear it on his way back to the huddle. Gets time in the pocket to sit back there and allow Terrell Owens to get down the field. This is Troy Vincent. He's playing safety in order to keep these types of plays from happening. The reason Adam Archuleta is not back there at safety is because he got beat too many times deep. This time, Terrell Owens gets in behind him, but he's just not able to secure the catch. Second and ten. Cowboys took a shot. Owens was open and dropped it. Marion Barber over the left side. A couple of yards shy of a first down. Vincent on the stop. The strong safety who did take over for Adam Archuleta. You know, Carlos Rogers on that last play, he's in support. They're on the run, and you're going to watch him. He's going to take on Anthony Fasano instead of trying to get in there and hit Marion Barber. He felt that if he could take on the lead blocker, that would clog up the hole. But he probably could have acted as if he was going to take on Fasano and then come back underneath and still make the play for a loss. Third down and about a yard and a half. Romo throws and the pass broken up and a flag comes in. Creighton again, the intended receiver. And it's Kenny Wright wondering if it's against him. Interference, defense, number 25. Automatic, first down. So that converts the third down for Dallas, the pass interference on Kenny Wright. He's got him with the right arm. I mean, you can't you can't wrap a guy with your right arm and then still reach around with your left and knock the ball down. Kenny Wright, who I said earlier, had been the starter the first seven games because of injury. Now playing the position in which they thought he would be playing when they brought him in. Finally is able to make a play on his own, but gets called for pass interference. A guy who's been victimized greatly here over the first half of the season. On first down, a toss to Barber. Picking his way, a nice run on first down. And he has wrestled down with a gain of 10. This guy just keeps getting better and better and better. And is averaging over five yards a carry. And he just picked up a first down for Dallas. You know, Greg Williams, the assistant head coach, you know, for this Redskin team and then coordinates this defense. He's a Buddy Ryan disciple. Buddy Ryan built defenses, hitting the quarterback with sacks and turnovers, two of which this Redskins defense has failed to do all year long. As he lets it go, it's an incomplete pass. Romo faked a throw out to Owens. Warwick Holdman came in and hit Romo as he let it go. They were trying to get behind the defense again with T.O. Well, and they got behind him, too. Carlos Rogers, he jumps the fake there. And that ball, if Troy Vincent's not able to get over the top, it did not look like he would have been able to do. Warwick Holdman saved the touchdown on that play. It was Fasano who whipped on the block of Warren Coleman. Second and ten. That's two chances now Dallas has had and hasn't been able to capitalize. And off to Barber. Marion Barber lowers his shoulder and picks up nine as he bangs into the body of Troy Vincent. So far, the offensive leaders for the Dallas Cowboys. Well, and you talked about Marion Barber and the changeup back that he is. He's showing it here. Third down and one, and what a play by Washington. 
He was the only guy out there to make a play and Marcus Washington just saved the first down. I think right now Dallas is trying to decide well they're going to go ahead and punt which I think is the right thing to do. The defense has been playing well here in the second half. But you're right a great play by Marcus Washington finally able to stop Dallas on third down and force a punt. Antoine Randall L. Waiting deep and Owens can sit over on the bench and think of what might have been. That will hop into the end zone. So it is a 20 yard net gain in field position. Here's the drop by Terrell Owens off the hand. Just a perfectly thrown ball by Tony Romo. And then the stop on third down by Marcus Washington. Big play by the seventh year linebacker from Auburn. Well, in the play there to Terrell Owens, I mean, that's a ball that a wide receiver really likes because he doesn't have to slow down in order to make the play. He can run through the ball, and it's a much easier catch. Terrell Owens just failed to make it. Houston leading at the Giants by three. Dallas leading here by seven. Quentin Portis trying to set up his block. Brought down by Brady James in three. You know, the Redskins have always been known under Joe Gibbs. And you're going to see these pulling linemen. And this is something that Clinton Portis just doesn't like that much. I mean, he says that he tends to be very quick. He lacks patience. And the linemen, when they pull in around in front of him, it just slows him down. And it doesn't allow him to hit the hole at the speed in which he would like to. He'd like to see more downhill runs than what he's been getting here lately. Big body of Randy Thomas was in his way on that run. Second and seven play action. Brunel underneath. Portis with a first down. And that, if the Redskins so choose, that could end this third quarter. That was a nice job by Mark Brunel, just knowing where Clinton Portis was and getting the ball into his hands. And a big, a big first down, oftentimes on a drive. The first first down is the hardest to get. Portis Gimpy getting over to the bench. Brunel and the Redskins will let the clock wind down. And off to the fourth quarter we go. First down Redskins, seven-point lead. Dallas back after this from your local Fox station. penalty on the celebration but so far it's the only points of this second half the touchdown throw to Terrell Owens if the Cowboys go on to win this game I think Parcells will find a little humor in that as well if they don't yeah. starting the fourth quarter first down Washington Antoine Randall Al is going to throw it former quarterback at Indiana airs it out and the pass incomplete but a penalty flag as Brandon Lloyd was interfered with. Roy Williams back there defending for Dallas. Well as you take a look at it it didn't look like Brandon Lloyd would be able to get to the ball anyway. Defense number 31. Automatic first down. You know, Roy Williams just coming over the top and, and really with no regard as to where Brandon Lloyd was or where the ball was, I should say. He went right after Brandon Lloyd. It would have been close as to whether or not Lloyd would have even been able to make the catch. It looked to me like it would have been an awfully good catch for him to try to, to, try to make. The Dallas Cowboys 134 penalty yards and it gives the Redskins life. And off is to Portis. Who has the only Washington touchdown today? Picked up three. I mean, you look at that last play. Prior to that play, the Redskins in the second half here had only had 17 yards of offense. Well, they were certainly in need of something to light a spark for them, and that's the play that looks like it's going to do it. Demarcus Ware slow to get up 
after that last play. Second down and seven for the Redskins. Big toss. Looking for Cooley. In the end zone. A juggle and a catch. Off the hands of Henry and into the waiting arms of Cooley. Touchdown. Let's take a closer look and make sure he had possession and that his feet were down. Ball's in the air. Absolutely. Initially, he was open by a large margin, and Mark Brunel just did not get the ball out there. This should never have been as close and as contested as what it ultimately was. Henry didn't pick it off and didn't knock it away. He tipped it. Along with Cooley, and Cooley's body was there to cradle it on his way to the ground for the touchdown. And now, we're tied. Cooley gets the touchdown. His third of the year, Brunel. Celebrating Williams, a big penalty on that drive, tied at 19. With the Giants going in toward the Houston end zone, trying to take a lead at home over the Texans. A four-play drive culminating with a touchdown throw to Cooley, helped along by the 48-yard penalty against Roy Williams. The Redskins have tied this game. Skyler Green is out to the 30. How long was Cooley open before he finally got the ball? Yeah, I mean, you're going to see his route. He's going to go there to the corner, but take a look at the angle that he has. Anthony Henry, 42, is trying to get underneath him. But if Mark Brunel had been able to throw the ball a little earlier and a little further to the corner, it would have been a very much uncontested throw. But having said that, a great job by Chris Cooley concentrating and being able to bring this one in. We have been impressed all day with Tony Romo. And now with the ball at his own 30, trying to lead his Cowboys down the field on the road against the Redskins. Tie game, Romo in trouble, fires to Witt, who makes the adjustment, makes the catch, gains only three. Rodgers and Marshall out there for the Redskins. Second down and seven. And it's the first time that they've been able to contain Romo in the pocket when he's wanted to get outside. Demetric Evans there playing right defensive end is the one who got up the field and forced Romo to throw it a little bit earlier than he wanted to. Sacked twice last week at Carolina once today, but he's been under fire all day. be five yards on Creighton. Creighton was getting ready to block down. False start. Offense. Number 84. Five-yard penalty. Second down. Redskins were showing blitz. Creighton was getting ready to block down, and he left too early. Yeah, Marcus Washington was showing that he was going to try to blitz inside. Patrick Creighton getting a little bit nervous about it, and then he left early. Giants have taken a 14 to 10 lead over Houston. Dallas just penalized for the 10th time today, second and 12. Romo underneath, off the hands of Terrell Owens, and he ends up dropping the ball on his way to the ground, incomplete. Another drop by Terrell Owens. Well, an old coach used to say that I had one catch per ball. And a bobble is as good as a drop in this league. And as you're going to see, the bobble there, and then it's just very difficult at that time to try to bring it in when you've got defensive players coming in to try to make the play. Had Terrell Owens have been able to catch that ball clean, he probably would have been able to turn up and pick up some pretty good yards if not the first down. Third down and 12. Just got it away. Romo drops it off for Barber, and Marion Barber picks up a first down as he's inside Washington territory. 
Romo came awfully close to crossing the line of scrimmage. He stayed behind it and completed it on the run. Well, and that's the improvising of, of Tony Romo. I mean, you're going you're gonna to see that they had everybody covered up. And he just knows where his outlet guy is, Marion Barber. And Marion Barber able to pick up the first down and breaking some tackles. Again, something that Drew Bledsoe not able to do. Romo with his mobility made that first down happen. Hand off to the 45 is Julius Jones picked up three. Let's go for a game break with it heating up here. Here's Chris Rose. Joe, the Giants have reclaimed the lead against Houston with no Plexico Burris in the lineup. Down at the goal line, who's Eli looking for? Jeremy Shockey, it's fifth touchdown grab of the year, gives the Giants the four-point lead. Back to Joe, Troy, and Pan. The Giants have won four straight, up on top in the division, five and two. Dallas right behind them. Pace for the second and seven. Philly off this week. Blitz from the Redskins. Romo throws and Owens hangs on this time and has another Cowboy first down. They're getting to the edge of Vanderjat field goal range in this tie game fourth quarter. You know, Tony Romo, we, we talk about his ability to move around and create plays. But this offensive line has also done a good job throughout the day. You see a pretty clean pocket there. And for the most part, he's had that, even when the Redskins have brought pressure. The line's done a good job of picking those things up. First down, Dallas, and around to Glenn. What a play in the backfield, wrestled down. That's Andre Carter, his only play of the day, a loss of seven, and he was the only guy there. Well, and Andre Girard, he's the guy who's going to try to come out. He's the center and make the block on Carter. Now, Carter does a great job of fighting through that block and then getting upfield. And then as you look at it, it looked like Andre Girard, he engaged with Carter, but then he thought that they would be able to get to the corner and that he could get to the next level. You could also see how much open space there was in front of Terry Glenn. Second and 18. Romo flushed out. Can't make anything happen. Back into Dallas territory. Marcus Washington there. A loss of eight. Andre Carter there as well. And that's the play there that Tony Romo has to learn. There's a fine line between trying to make a play and then knowing when you got to get the ball out of your hands. And on this play here, once he started out to his right, he had nowhere to go with the ball. The ball comes out there. There was no reason for him to have to take a sack on that play. Now, the Redskins have been awful in stopping Dallas on third down, third and long here, and they need a big play. A handoff to Barber, Marion Barber. Letting a block get set up. There may be a hold out on the edge. Barber's brought down shy of the first down anyway. Lamar Marshall was held on the play. You would think it would be declined, and that would be fourth down. Oh, there's no foul for holding on the play. Fourth down. Either way, it's fourth down, and it's time for a Dallas punt. They had a first down, Troy. Right at the edge of Vanderjat field goal range and then tried that reverse and that's what started him going backward. That's right and, and I'm a little surprised that they just ran the ball there to Barber as well as Tony Romo has been in picking up big chunks on third and long. Maybe they don't pick up the first down but maybe they're able to get into a position to give Vanderjat an opportunity for a field goal. McBriar the nose of the football pointed down punts it. Antoine Randall-L will go into the end zone. Antoine Randall-L made the right decision, and the Redskins, who have recently tied it, now have it back, starting at their own 20. Last couple of possessions, a few missed opportunities for Dallas, and a couple of big plays by this Washington defense. Now the Redskins have it at their own 20 in a tie game, 8.54 to go. Big one for Washington, they needed. 
over Dallas. First place Giants are winning by four with five and a half minutes left against Houston at the Meadowlands. Sellers out of the backfield, tripped up, brought down by Henry. A gain of eight on the play. Missed opportunities to be sure after the touchdown. The Cowboys went for a two-point conversion to try and make it a three-point game. That's big. And then in this second half, Terrell Owens dropped what would have been a sure touchdown. And a ton of penalty yardage against Bill Parcells' Cowboys, 138 yards. Right now, the story is that missed two-point conversion try. Sellers first down. Troy, you talked about it. You're always going to be chasing that point if you don't make it. Extra point percentage this season, 99%. Two-point conversion rate, one of the best in any year since they've put it into the league, 61%. But that point is the difference now. Yeah, I think so many times coaches, as soon as they score, they immediately look at this chart that was formulated as to whether or not they should go for one or go for two based on score. And I just don't think you should ever look at that until you get into the fourth quarter. And off the Portis. Portis hit hard at the 35. They'll mark it just beyond the 35. Roy Williams on the stop. Tomorrow night on Fox, 8 Eastern, 7 Central. It's the episode you cannot miss. Prison break, all new tomorrow, 8 Eastern, 7 Central, right here on Fox. Viewer discretion is advised. That is tomorrow, and right now, a good one with the Redskins and Cowboys tied at 19 with just over seven to play. Brunel steps up and fires high and nearly picked off by Williams right through his hands. Brandon Lloyd, the intended receiver. And that's one that Williams had lined up and did not catch. Yeah, and Roy Williams has had some big interceptions already this season. In fact, he had a big one against these Redskins in week two. A ball that came out pretty funny on Brunel, and it hits Williams right in the helmet. You know, those are opportunities that you get, and you don't get a lot of them, but when you have the chance, you've got to be able to make those plays. That's the difference in winning games and losing games. Roy Williams with five takeaways this season. That was a big one that he didn't come up with. Third and seven. Blitz. Out of the backfield. The catch. Liddell Betts. The move. Inside the 45. on third down from Brunel to Liddell Betts. Watch the offensive line there, and then Aaron Glenn, he thought that Betts, because of the all-out blitz, was going to have to block. And then Betts runs right by him, so Aaron Glenn immediately is having to turn and chase. You can see Roy Williams, who's coming right up the middle. A great job by Randy Thomas, the right guard, squeezing him off. On first down, it's Betts. Tripped up. And a good play by Ferguson, the nose tackle who came through no game. You know, you go back and you take a look at, at Aaron Glenn, and he was on Liddell Betts on that last play. And he thought Liddell Betts was going to block. And so as he comes up to take him, <laughs> Liddell Betts goes right by him and is able to pick up the big game. Marcel's riding him hard over on the sideline. And Aaron Glenn yelling right back. Second down and 10. Brunel sets up, throws high, and it's nearly picked off again off the hands of Brady James. With Clinton Portis, the intended receiver, it's third and 10. Five and a half to play. It'll be interesting to see here now if the Dallas Cowboys elect to try to bring pressure and get the ball out of Brunel's hands, which is what they have done at times already. But the Redskins have been able to make play when they have. Right now, Dallas is playing cover. Third down and 10. Brunel buying time. Has to run and won't get it. 
And the Redskins are outside field goal range for Novak. It's fourth down. Kenyon Coleman forced Brunel out of bounds. So what are the Redskins going to do on fourth down? The offense stays on the field. They're in that in-between yardage. And it looks like they're going to go for it. Yeah, it's kind of kind of no man's land, you know. I mean, you don't pick up that many yards, you know, if you punt. And then your defense has to hold them. And with five and a half minutes to play, I think they go for it here on fourth down. Washington calls a timeout to talk about it. Fourth down when we come back. The Redskins rethink it and in essence have to burn a timeout to punt. Green will let it go beyond him and it takes a bounce into the end zone. It went right past Rodgers. Carlos Rodgers had it go right through him. And the Cowboys, instead of starting at their one, will have it at their own 20 in a tie game. Well, we keep telling you to file stuff away. We told you to file away the decision by the Cowboys to forget the extra point. That looms large now. And then on the other side, file away the timeout taken by the Redskins. They overruled themselves, pulled their offense off the field. Joe Gibbs and his clock management has been called under question since he came back. They burned a timeout, punted it, and now from the 20, here's Glenn, who has it go off his hand, incomplete, covered by Springs. Pretty good throw by Romo, but incomplete. You know, but I, I will tell you that, you know, I understand that they burned the timeout, but I, I do think they made the right decision there in a tie ball game. If they had gone for it on fourth down, and made it, then that's great. They probably come away with some points. But if they had failed to do that, boy, you're giving the ball right back to Dallas with great field position. It's just a shame for the Redskins that Carlos Rogers wasn't able to make that play and keep that punt from going into the end zone. Now second and ten from the 20 and a handoff underneath. Not much. Julius Jones picks up two. It'll be third down and eight. Golston and Washington and this again down. sorry Joe I mean this is a again a big play on third down where Dallas has converted today 64 percent of their opportunities coming into this game the Washington Redskins had not been very good on third down and when you get into late tight ball games like this third downs are absolutely critical Romo throws for Fasano. Springs knocks him down immediately, and it's fourth down. You know, the Cowboys have this signal. You might have seen it. When Romo goes hand to the neck, that's when he's changing routes to the outside, and he's anticipating pressure. They pick it up, but Sean Springs was watching Fasano the entire time on that route. Good stop by the Redskins. Good punt by McGuire, Antoine Randall L. Good return and good field position at their own 44 for the Redskins. 16 yard return, Singleton the first one there to make the stop and Antoine Randall L thinking he almost broke it. Coming up on the AT&T postgame show, Kurt Terry, Hal, and Jimmy will have scores and highlights from around the league. And the Fox Sports ticker will keep you updated with up to the second stats. They'll unveil the updated BCS standings. We'll see how previously third-ranked West Virginia's loss will shake things up. And Antoine Randall, and he got tripped. He got tripped, and they missed it. It was Al Singleton that stuck his leg out, and the official missed it. 3.41 to go. Starting from their own 45, Clinton Portis over the right side. Gets a couple. Not so sure if Al Singleton doesn't trip Antoine Randall L there that he doesn't necessarily, he may score. I mean, he was shot out of a cannon when he got the ball right up the middle of the field. The offensive leaders for Washington. Mark Brunel with a touchdown throw. 
came to Cooley in this half, which tied the game. Portis, one big 38-yard run for a touchdown. And there's the touchdown for Chris Cooley, 66-yard dead. Second and seven. Brunel, Sellers, brought down immediately by DeMarcus Ware. Who Bill Parcells will tell you may be the best all-around athlete on this Dallas team. Tough time getting up after the play. I believe that's Sellers who made the catch and then was wrapped up by DeMarcus Ware. Good play to bring up third down after the timeout with 2.45 to go in Washington. The day for the two quarterbacks Romo, 240 yards, two touchdowns. Brunel. 175 yards and the Redskins were handed this opportunity starting at their own 45. They picked up two and a half yards and have third down now. Two and a half to go. Brunel over the middle finds James Thrash who has a first down for the Redskins, inches inside the Dallas 35. Well, this offensive line really overall has done a good job for Mark Brunel as well. And then you've got Thrash running a square, and you can see right down the middle. That's exactly what Mark Brunel was looking at himself. Have time in the pocket. you got an open receiver. Just get it in his hands. You know, Mark Brunel, who was sacked in the first meeting between these two teams six times, has only been sacked once here today, and the offensive line has done a terrific job. So now two minutes remain here with the Redskins and Brunel over to talk about it. First down for the ball at the Dallas 35. Tie game. Two minutes to go, a 19-19 game. Washington trying to keep their season alive. We lost in week two at Dallas, trying to return the favor. First down. Handoff is to Portis. And Portis to the 32. The inexperienced Nick Novak getting ready. to welcome those of you just joining us it has been a seesaw battle the Cowboys took the lead at the start of this second half 19 to 12 earlier they went for a two-point conversion and the first quarter failed it's the difference in this game as Portis gets it inside the 30 and you have to believe that Nick Novak is on the sideline hoping for more yards to make the kick easier early here's the two-point conversion try incomplete for Creighton Touchdown grab by Terrell Owens. Then he missed one in this second half, led perfectly by Romo, but he dropped it. The touchdown flip to Cooley after the juggle, the catch, a 19-19 game. A big third down conversion on this drive, a complete to James Thrash, and with under a minute to go. Third down and three for the Redskins. In the backfield, Portis brought down by Roy Williams. In Dallas, they think about taking a timeout, they should, and now they will. They're first. So here's Novak, a guy who took over, started today 0 for 2 after replacing the injured John Hall. And it'll be fourth down when play resumes. This has been a good game, and as we said at the start, there's an audience that just joined us for the... Washington Redskins have lost three in a row. This is a game that if they want any hope the rest of the season, they have to win. Yeah, they got to win this one, and then they got to win next week and, and several more down the road. And, you know, right now, if you look at what just happened with them running the ball with Clinton Portis the last three plays, he had the one run for 38 yards. But other than that one run, they've got nothing out of their running game with Clinton Portis. And so Gibbs loads it up on his shoulders. They're on a critical third down. And he stopped for no game. Novak will try it from 49 yards. 
He missed from this distance in their last game at Indy. Pushed to the right. And Novak replacing John Hall is now one for four on the season. You know, I'll go back to that third down call as we take a look here at the attempt from 49 yards. But they had run the ball with Clinton Portis on first down and second down and really didn't get much out of it. And on third and short, third and four, they elect to go with Clinton Portis again instead of trying to maybe take a shot to one of the wide receivers for the first down. So Novak hit from 28 in the first half. He misses from 49. He stands by himself on the sideline and watches his defense take over. Cowboys. Fasano. A ton of open room in front of him, and Fasano is out of bounds with a first down near midfield. He would have run for 20 minutes. Well, and that's the problem with Dallas having two timeouts. You miss the field goal attempt, and now all of a sudden you give Dallas great field position with still time enough on the clock because of the timeouts to get themselves in a position to kick a field goal for the win. Which would have happened on that one play had Fasano not slipped. That's right. After making the catch. I mean, there was nobody along the sideline. Can Romo get his team in field goal position? Fires, completes. That's Terrell Owens and a timeout taken immediately by Bill Parcells with 18 seconds left. Forward progress had been stopped. The ball at the 45. And Dallas has one timeout remaining and 18 seconds on the clock. Well, motion's running pretty high over there on the Cowboys sideline. Probably none more so than Mike Vanderjack. You know, every time he gets into this situation now with the game onto the line, obviously you go back to what happened last year in the playoff game against the Pittsburgh Steelers when he pushed it wide right. It was basically a shank with a chance for the Colts to tie. Now he moves on to Dallas. His career with the Cowboys and Bill Parcells got off to a rocky start. Injured during the preseason was not the kicker. Sean Sweezum was in week one. Since then, though, this season, Vanderjat is five for five in the fourth quarter, and his season long is 50 yards. To get into that range, the Cowboys need to pick up another 13 yards. Second down and five. But with one timeout, Dallas can still throw the ball to the middle of the field. Romo steps up down the middle, overshoots Witten, who was behind Adam Archuleta. You can see Parcell say we've got plenty of time. They do with 13 seconds left and that one timeout. Well, with one timeout, I mean, they're, they can do anything that they want to do on this next play. But... Depending on how this play develops, it's definitely going to affect whether or not they're going to have time for one more play or have to go for a field goal attempt if they get a completion here. Romo fires for Witten over the middle. There's the completion. Timeout Dallas with six seconds left. And they are well within field goal range for Vanderjet as the young Tony, Tony Romo makes the completion to Jason Witt. And Adam Marcelletta, the guy who lost his job to Troy Vincent because he doesn't cover very well, is the guy who's locked on Jason Witten down the seam. A perfect pass by Tony Romo and a nice catch by Jason Witten. It will be a 28-yard game and a 35-yard attempt by Vanderjet, who has 11 career game-winning field goals. If you're just joining us, here's the game. 
Tied at 19. Six seconds to go. Vanderjet has it blocked. Picked up by Taylor. Penalty flag on the play, and Taylor's still going. Troy Vincent blocked it. There's a flag down, but it came after the block. Personal foul, dressing the face mask, kicking team, number 63. 15-yard penalty added to the end of the run. The game will be extended by one untimed down. First down. So one untimed down, and this 15-yard penalty will march the ball down inside field goal range. And you look, it's Vincent who got his hands up and blocked it for Washington. It was Troy Vincent that blocked it, but I don't know that it would have mattered even if he hadn't have gotten it. There was three other hands back there that would have gotten a hand on it as well. And now you think about the fact that Sean Taylor, rather than just going down, he kept running and got a good return on that ball. Now you add the penalty on top of that, and now here you are, and the Redskins are going to be given an opportunity to make a field goal on their own. So Novak, who just missed from 49, pushed it wide right. And if you look at Joe Gibbs, I don't know if what he could possibly be thinking right now. I think he's trying to sort it all out himself. But you're right. I mean, Taylor had every opportunity to just say, we're going to overtime. He did everything he could on that return. They got the face mask penalty, 15 yards, which takes the ball to the 30. And Novak will come onto the field. He has missed from 49. He's hit from 28, one for four all year. And I guarantee you, every coach on the sidelines for the Redskins was yelling for Sean Taylor to get to the ground and not turn it over. Now look at it. 47-yard try to win it for the Redskins. Good. Redskins win. Good snap, good hold. And it just drew enough for Novak to make him the hero. Missing from 49, but hitting from 47. The Redskins snap a three-game losing streak. The Cowboys back to 500 at four and four. What a turnaround in the last few seconds. Washington wins it. We're back at this. This has been a Fox Sports presentation. Center. The Colts bring a perfect record in the Foxborough. See how four picks from Tom Brady put the Pats in too deep a hole. NFL Week 9 chock full of surprises, including a Dallas disaster in the final seconds. One spot behind the Buckeyes and Wolverines now. Does Louisville deserve to be number three? Plus, a new chase leader with just two races left and details on a post-race scuffle.
Sports Center. Alongside Scott Van Pelt, I'm Steve Levy. Just how crazy is this NFL season? Let's just say the 49ers actually have more wins than, say, the Steelers. And Peyton Manning, Tom Brady, and Joe Montana all threw touchdown passes on the same day. Well, we'll explain. Manning and Brady were sharing the same field in a Sunday night game that could go a long way in determining who has home field in January. You know, the Colts want to avoid a trip back here when the snow is falling. Game face and loose. A little difference in uh, makeup of the QBs before the game started. Early on, Tom Brady. Antoine Bethea makes a catch. He was the guy that had the best shot at it, and he grabs it, and that was the beginning of a turnover parade for the Patriots. Manning, under pressure, eludes. Dallas Clark and Marvin Harrison both out there, and Marvin Harrison, be the beginning of a huge evening. Eight catches, the 12th time in his career. He reached 145, and he gets his face mask, grabs, is going down. Rodney Harrison injured on the play, didn't return. Later in the drive, the most prolific quarterback wide receiver tandem in history in terms of hooking up for touchdowns, do it yet again. The Colts up 7-0, but Brady would respond. Fourth and three, they go for it. He hits Kevin Falk, move the chains, moving in towards the end zone. We know that Colt defense, not renowned for its ability to stop the run. They gave up 148 on the night. This was a tough one for Corey Dillon. We're knotted up at seven. We move to the third quarter. Adam Vinatieri, the folks here in New England know him well. He never misses field goals. He mi what? He missed a field goal. The folks cheer. They don't know what to do. Oh, he's our guy, but he doesn't play for us anymore, so they've got to cheer. Later in the third, same score, third and goal. This catch is genius. It's as good as you will see. And, and you, this, this you never see, number 88, never gets emotional. But after this catch, Marvin Harrison deserves to celebrate. Tips it to himself, one foot in, drags the left toe. This guy... All cake, no icing, just shows up, does his thing week in and week out. One of the best there's ever been. Bill Belichick did not challenge, and he made the right call because it was one of the finer touchdowns you will see. Fourth quarter, seven-point game. Brady trying to get his team back in it. Ball's tipped at the line of scrimmage, and it's Cato June. That's not go blue spirit. These guys were teammates at Michigan. Third pick of the game for Brady. Now, Adam Vinatieri, he's made his last 20 straight field goals in the fourth quarter in overtime. When it's clutch, when it matters, he makes. This is late in the game, and it fades to the right. This was after the Colts, if they would have gotten a first down, could have run out the clock. So now it means that Brady gets one more chance. The turnover bug has been biting, and it bites one more time. And again, not necessarily Brady's fault. It's a tip pass off the hands of Kevin Falk, and it's June again afterwards. The respect... Of the quarterbacks, a four-pick night for Brady, and the Colts win it. Manning's numbers, this is, this is Steve hard to believe. 300 yards in three straight games for the first time for Peyton Manning. You wouldn't necessarily think, hard that, to believe. You'd think that, the, that that's something he would do just about every game. It is the 136th time he's passed the 300-yard mark in a game. The Colts have now won two straight in New England. Probably will not have to go back there because home field should go through Peyton and Indianapolis. Really cares later. And the Redskins and the Cowboys have seen just about everything from each other over the years. Sunday, a chapter Joe Gibbs couldn't even watch. The Blitz is on the way. Boomer and TJ and the Stars out in the NBA. All the action from the hardwood and a new Nextel Cup chase leader. And a happy election week for football. Go out and vote, as it say in Chicago early and often. Chris Berman along with Tom Jackson on the Blitz. Because this week, Tom, week Packed. nine, was stuffed with some different stuff. Packed. Different stuff. Well, we did have a chance for the Bears and the Colts to get to 8-0. There's only been three times in history that two teams at the same time got 8-0. And certainly Chicago playing 1-6 Miami. This would be easy. That's <laughs> why they play the game. Here we go at Soldier Field where Rex Grossman and the Bears have been absolutely crushing teams. Do you remember 1985? Dan Marino for Coach Shula hit Nat Moore. And on this night, Miami gave the Bears their only loss of the year, 38 to... Ah, ah, ah. Coach Ditka didn't like it. But this is not 1985. This is 2006, where the Bears are all-powerful. Devin he... Uh-oh. Devin Hester fumbles. Eddie Jackson, Tom's third cousin, picks it up. Miami in business at the six. Third and goal at the five. Joey Harrington played plenty of games there with the Lions. Hits Marty Booker. Ah, don't worry. Miami's up 7-3. Certainly, <laughs> this is not going to happen, Tom. 
Jason Taylor, a proud Dolphin, and you watch him. He brings it every game, and Jason Taylor drops back in coverage, snares it. Rex Grossman is picked off, and it's a touchdown. What a defensive lineman dream, 14-3. to Now, Taylor again makes another big play. Yeah, Jason Taylor acting like he's on the slot. Then you see him do a great job of getting a push, a pass rush. And forces a fumble. He was everywhere today. 14 to 3, Miami. But don't worry. There's no way the Bears are going to lose to the Dolphins. Come on. Rex Grossman says that's right. I'm going to go down there. He can do this. Throw it deep to Moose and Muhammad. And what a grab he makes. Touchdown. Take another look with the leap, the grab, and it's going to make it 14 to 10. Yeah, you know, you get these big receivers, six foot three, six foot four. They're able to go, go up over defenders and make that grab. He gets to the end zone there. Bernard Berry and Hurt. Justin Gage is in, and he is disengaged from the football. Here, my bell. He makes the hit and fumble. Andre Goodman has it and returns it all the way to the 12. So again, the Miami defense setting up the Miami Dolphins on a short field. Shades of Kyle Orton last year for the Bears, Tom. Harrington to Wes Welker, 21-10 Miami. Upset. That is no way the Bears are going to lose to Miami. It's 21-13. And Grossman. We well, just kind of flung that, huh? Ronaldo Hill picks it off. And again, Miami has the ball at the Bears 24. Three interceptions, three fumbles, six turnovers, Bears today. Next play, Harrington to the end zone. Chris Chambers, time has come today. Between the two defenders, what a catch, 28-13. You know what, Tom? I'm beginning to think that Miami just might <laughs> upset the Bears on this day, despite that lick by Erlocker. Ronnie Brown had a big game, 157 yards. The Bears fans, they weren't expecting this. Neither was Lovey Smith. 31-13, Miami ends the Bears and the Bears fans' thoughts of an undefeated season that ends with a thud. Miami, of all teams, come off a bye and go into Chicago and literally steal it with the six turnovers by the Bears. Jason Taylor, one of the many stars. George Smith at Soldier Field. After beating their opponents by an average of 30 points in their first four home games, the Bears finally found a formidable opponent, themselves. Rex Grossman was responsible for four turnovers, including three interceptions, as the Bears gave away their undefeated season. If it doesn't hurt, you know, how important is winning, you know? So it, it hurts bad. And, um, you know, we're 7-1. and one. Um, You know, it hurts. We're going to think about it for a couple of days and watch the tape and get better and then, um, and then put everything in perspective of what, what's out there for us to, to go get. Our football team didn't play well. I mean, starting with the coaches, and going all the way down. Uh, again, Rex was a part of that, but we had a lot of things that went wrong today. You never think that you're going to have six turnovers, and, and the way that we had them was just it's terrible. And if we play like that against a good team, especially a good defense like Miami, it's going to be hard to um, get victories. It was definitely hard for us to, to get anything going, established, especially when we would have a drive going, and then all of a sudden you know, we'd have a turnover, and that would just kind of stop our momentum. The Dolphins' three offensive touchdowns matched the total number the Bears had given up in their first four home games. But it was the Bears' turnovers that put Miami in position. In those three scoring drives, the Miami offense totaled just 42 yards. Adewale Ogunlia said even though the Bears managed to beat Arizona despite turnovers, when you have six of them, you have no business winning. In Chicago, George Smith, ESPN. All right, George, thank you. So the Bears up to this point, 7-0. They had given up about 14 points a game. Their turnover margin going in plus seven. They'd outscored opponents by 152 points. However, on this one day, they lost, given up 31 points. Turnover margin minus four. They lost 31. I, I, it's going to happen. Mm -hmm. And so first off, Rex Wurzman said they're seven to one, which Absolutely. is a good thing. But Absolutely. can we please stop? And, and we're, can we stop comparing them to the 1985 Bears? Can that, I'm going to compare them today. <laughs> to these 75 Bears who went 4-10. and ten. All right, now maybe there's a comparison you want to make. That's absurd as well. All good things must yeah, pass. They yeah. made it to November undefeated, but this was the thud time. Six turnovers, they did it against Arizona and against it. Yeah, I heard it from Grossman, heard it from Lovey Smith as well. And, and, and I think what you look at here is you look back on this season, now you see the game against Minnesota, the game against Arizona, today against Miami. Not the 85 Bears, but I think this is a good thing for them, a very good football team. Just be the 06 Bears, and now 
You get as far as you can, try to seed yourself in the playoffs, win your division, but give the Miami Dolphins credit. Mm -hmm. Joey Harrington, a couple of picks, but, you know, he bought some time for his receivers. Jason Taylor played lights out today. I think defensively, the Dolphins really a pretty good football team. Yes. Offensively today, they got a little help, so, you know, give them credit. The Bears have a, an outstanding football team, but forget about the 85 Bears. Just be who you are. Well, be the 06 Bears. Here's another thing, and the Bears... Remember, everyone's going, well, maybe it was one or two look at the schedule. Now, all of a sudden, you have the Giants coming up next week on the road, 6-2. and two. You have the Jets coming up. By the way, the Bears can leave their stuff in the Meadowlands Visitor's Locker Room and just leave it there for the next week, 4-4. Four and four. Then you're at New England. You're home to Minnesota with a winning record, although they've come on, on some tough times. St. Louis, if, all of a sudden, that schedule doesn't look different. like a cakewalk. <laughs> it looks a little different now. Yeah, so the Bears are human, and congrats to Miami for, for showing some moxie. Dallas and Washington, how many great times have they hooked mm -hmm. up over the years? Would this be another one of those? Here we go with Tony Romo. New life to the Cowboys last Sunday night against Carolina. Clinton Portis always with disguises. That's real oxygen. Joe Gibbs, fourth and goal, going to go for it. And Dallas defense rises up and stops Clinton Portis. But instead of turning the defensive series into a plus, the offense hands it back with Julius Jones. Bang! Lamar Marshall, the safety, so Washington gets a two-run home run from Nick Johnson, and they lead two to nothing. Then Romo, Terrell Owens, 16 yards, two feet in. Same drive, third and seven down to the Redskins, 10. Romo, as we go here, second quarter, to Terry Glenn, 10 yards. Cowboys went for two. Bill Parcells said it was the chart, it seemed early, but what have you. Cowboys don't get it, it's 6-5. Then Clinton Portis around the left side. Who's not going to get him, Tom? Roy, Wo Roy oh. Williams right there. Just the, uh, the angle, not quite the angle he needed. Speed, not quite the speed he needed. 38 yards. It's 12-9 skin. Romo, shotgun, tied at 12. Back to pass to Patrick Creighton wow. down the sideline. In the sun, that's a tough grab. Throw right there, 48 yards. Then second to goal at the Redskins, four. Romo, Terrell Owens catches, touchdown, and then... You know, making fun of the bay, hey, I take naps. Well, it's a 15-yard penalty. This is just foolish. Foolish. There are about 18 flags on it. Uh, Cowboys lead 19-12. T.O. catches, but T.O., he could go. Oh, it, 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 what a critical drop that was. Yeah, you, you take another look at this. This is a chance to put the game away. T.O.'s got it in his hands. He tries to refocus on it. You know, he agonized over it, but you got to make that catch. You got to make that catch. Could have put him up by two scores or certainly in position to do it. Now, Antoine Randall, part of the gadgetry that he delivers to Brandon Lloyd. Incomplete. Roy Williams going to get flagged, and so it goes kind of as a completion, 48 yards. Almost incidental contact, except he got there just soon enough to draw the official's attention. Mark Brunel, Chris Cooley between defenders. That's a nice juggling catch. 18 yards. We're tied at 19. Now, the last 35 seconds of this wild. Nick Novak kicks, kicked it nearby Maryland. The kick is up. It's on the way for the win at 40. No, forget it. Wide right, 49 yards, and there's time left on the clock for Dallas. Now, how about this throw from Tony Romo with 13 seconds to go from about the 45? Zing to Jason Witten, 28 yard game. Coach Parcells, timeout, timeout, time, timeout. Time <laughs> they got the timeout. Field goal range, six seconds to go, and it's going to be Mike Vanderjack, 35 yards. He's almost automatic, except blocked by recently acquired Troy Vincent. And then, to make matters worse for Dallas, Sean Taylor picks it up. Uh oh, wait a minute. A flag comes down as the return is on. Taylor into plus territory, and Roy Williams knows. I think there's a face mask on us, Tom. Absolutely saw it right there. Now, that doesn't look like the 15-yard variety, but it was called as a 15-yard penalty. So it gives him a 47-yarder, and Novak gets no good. No! It curves back the nice little draw on the ball, Tom, <laughs> like your tee shots. Good! 47 yards, and Parcells can't believe that Novak... Boy, Maryland won on a big field goal uh, on Saturday against Clemson. Novak kick for Maryland. T.O. had his chances. The Redskins win an improbable 22-19 game over the Dallas Cowboys, who have had the Giants thud, the Carolina high, now the Washington thud. What a three weeks for Dallas and coach Bill Parcells. Well, it's a heartbreaker. I really don't have too much to say. Um... 
just one of those games could have gone either way. And um, really tough pill to swallow because after all that, closing that, up, you know, closing the distance down there to get a shot at winning and then have it just to reverse itself, it's, it's very disheartening. For a guy that's kicked thousands of balls in his life, I knew it was going in just by the way it came off my foot. So um, I hit it great. I wasn't nervous. And uh, after I hit it, I felt like we were off to the races and winning the game. And when you hear thud, thud, it's not a good deal. For 1.3 seconds, you got to hold it and you got to, everybody's got to do their job. And, you know, it takes 11 guys. Well, it might have been good had it gotten past Troy Vincent and company. They busted through, kick a little, hey, they'll, they'll judge that in the films. Dallas giveth, taketh away, right, for the two. Well, I, I think that one of the keys is the penalties, 153 mm -hmm. penalty yards. And, you know, you can see the exclamation mark at the end of the game. You know, you're kicking the, uh, the ball with a chance to win the game. Not only do you get the ball blocked, you get a little bit of a return from the Redskins, but you get the penalty tacked yep. on, which makes that a 47-yard field goal and a makeable field goal. And then I think, you know, for T.O., you've got to make that catch. We said that during the highlight package. Uh, I'm reminded a couple of times. There's the Giants catch that could have put them back in the game, and there's this one that put, could have put a game away. It, you know, you just got to do th the things you need to do. You know, another reminder, Tom, division games on the road. It shows you, now put in perspective, the Giants have a two-game lead in this NFC East, partly because they won at Philly and they won at Dallas. Here's Dallas going to, quote, lowly Washington. Couldn't get a win on the road. You, you start winning on the road in the division. That's right. That's why one team right. is up two That's games right. on Dallas right. and the Philadelphia. And it makes Washington now much more interested in their game at Philly next week as a result of having a big division win against them. Romo, pretty impressive. Yes, well. very good. Yes. But Washington wins. You're watching... Dublin.